Hello chemists, welcome to this first video in a series of videos titled A-Level Mechanisms. Now today we're going to be talking all about nucleophilic substitution and if you want to get straight on it do just skip forward a little bit in this video. But whilst I was working on all the video editing tools to try and improve the production quality of these a little bit, I did actually find some of my really old mechanism videos which I made whilst I was back at uni. So I thought I'd share a few clips of those with you guys now, just for comic effect really, you can take the mick out of me. Enjoy. This is my lecture on reaction mechanisms and today we're going to be talking about alkyne anions and their use as powerful nucleophiles. The next of these reactions I'd like to tell you about is Wolf-Kishner reduction. Wolf-Kishner reduction utilises hydrazine and potassium hydroxide as its reagents. Just like any other powerful nucleophile. So this reaction is going to be essentially the same to the last one I showed you with the alkyne anions. If we have this molecule here with a carbonyl functional group there, we can see, sorry, let me draw that line again. We can see that this carbon here will be slightly positive due to the fact that the carbonyl oxygen is attracting the electrons in this double bond. On a second viewing, I've actually realized there's not much that's changed apart from that awful haircut that I did myself. Anyway, let's get on to mechanisms. We're looking at nucleophilic substitution today. Okay, so in this first reaction, we're going to change a halogenoalkane into an alcohol via nucleophilic substitution. I've drawn a little reaction scheme here. You can see we've changed from a halogenoalkane now to an alcohol. Now, this is a nucleophilic substitution because we've substituted a group on the halogenoalkane for another group. And the reagents and conditions are as follows. You need warm and aqueous sodium or potassium hydroxide and this also needs to be done under reflux. So the potassium or sodium hydroxide as I said needs to be warm but it also needs to be aqueous. Let's have a look at the mechanism for this. So our halogenoalkane has a, po uh, a polar bond here. The carbon is delta positive and the bromide is delta negative which means our nucleophile hydroxide is able to attack that delta positive carbon and that forms a bond with the carbon, but carbon can't form five bonds, so this bromine group needs to leave, taking its electrons with it as bromide. Okay, now that will go to form our alcohol. We've substituted the bromine for the OH group, the hydroxyl group, and we'll also get the byproduct of KBr. Now I've got the byproduct of KBr because I use potassium hydroxide. However, if I'd have used sodium hydroxide, I've got NaBr, sodium bromide instead. Okay, let's have a look at our next one then. So in this time we wanted to change a halogenoalkane into a nitrile. Okay, so I've done my reaction scheme here. As you can see, we've got a halogenoalkane, and now we've got a nitrile because it's got this C triple bond N. Again, this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction because we're substituting one group for another using a nucleophile, and our reagents and conditions are as follows. We need to use warm ethanolic potassium cyanide. Ethanolic means it's dissolved in ethanol, okay? And this needs to be done under reflux. KCN is the formula of the potassium cyanide there, okay? So let's have a look at our mechanism. This time we've got the nitrile nucleophile, okay? Or sorry, the cyanide nucleophile. And we've got a delta positive carbon, delta negative bromine, bromine and therefore our nucleophile is going to be attracted to that delta positive carbon forming a bond with it we're going to have to break this bond here and therefore we'll have substituted that bromide for the nitrile group okay so you can now see we've got the lovely nitrile group on here now because we use kcn and the brs come off we're going to get potassium bromide as our byproduct there okay let's have a look at our next one we want to convert a nitrile into a primary amine. Now this isn't a nucleophilic substitution, but it's a very common follow-up reaction uh, to the reaction I just showed you. So in this case, we've got the nitrile that we previously formed, and we want to turn that into a primary amine. In other words, we want to make this N an NH2 group. Well, reacting it with hydrogen with a nickel or platinum catalyst will actually achieve that. And as you can see now, this carbon here now has two hydrogens on it, but this nitrogen also has two hydrogens on it. So we're now looking at an amine instead of a nitrile okay so the mechanism for this is actually called reduction and the conditions are as follows there's two different options our first option is to use a reagent called lithium aluminium hydride LiH4 and that is done in dry ether that's our solvent and you add that first and then you add some dilute acid afterwards Alternatively, we can use the mechanism that I've showed here. If we use hydrogen gas, a nickel or platinum catalyst, high temperatures and pressures, then you achieve this reaction here. Okay, let's have a look at our next reaction then. We want to turn a halogenoalkane into a primary amine. Now, there is a little bit of an A-level addition to this, but we're going to ignore that for now because we're just looking at the AS method. 
Okay, so here's our halogen of alkane. You need to react this with two moles of ammonia. I'll tell you a little bit more why in a second. And as you can see, the bromine's now been substituted for an NH2 group or an amine group. Okay, and we're actually getting ammonium salt, ammonium bromide in this case, is our byproduct. So our mechanism for this is nucleophilic substitution. Now, our conditions are very, very important for this one. We need excess ammonia dissolved in ethanol, and we need to heat it up. So let's have a look at our mechanism. Again, this carbon's delta positive, that bromine, bromine's delta negative. So our nucleophile, ammonia is acting as a nucleophile in this first step, is going to attack that carbon. And then we're going to break the carbon-bromine bond here. Now, what that will do is if you look how this has got three hydrogens on it, it's forming a fourth bond. So it's going to be NH3 still. One, two, three. And because it's got four bonds in total, that actually means it's positively charged. So our second mole of ammonia, as you can see, the fact that we've got two there, the excess ammonia, that's actually going to act as a base. And it's going to get rid of one of those hydrogens. So we can end up with this NH2 rather than this NH3. So it's going to do that. Okay. Deprotonate, we call that. And then that hydrogen is going to give its electrons back to the nitrogen, getting rid of that charge. Okay. So therefore we get our primary amine product, but then because this one's grabbed a hydrogen, that becomes NH4, and then it's going to pair up with that bromine from earlier, so we're going to get ammonium bro bromide as our byproduct there. Okay, well thanks very much for watching this video. In the next video we're going to be looking at electrophilic addition reactions, again from the AS spec, so I hope you'll join me for that one. Thanks very much. Goodbye.